Sarah McMahon is on hold. She's our next guest. She is now part of the Ultimate Fighting Championship. And being that she's also an Olympic medalist in the sport of wrestling, we wanted to get her take on the news yesterday that the sport of wrestling will no longer continue as of the 2020 Olympics. So let's bring her on. Sarah, how are you? I'm good. How are you doing? Doing good. Welcome back to MMA Junkie Radio. Always a pleasure to have you on. So, uh, terrible news we heard yesterday, and uh, I know you weren't too thrilled about it either. No, I definitely was um, totally shocked. Um, my first reaction was, no way. Like, they just they can't have one of the first sports that was ever in the Olympics out of the Olympics. Like, that just seemed impossible to me. Um, and, I mean, luckily, like, right now, though, from what I understand, it still is a recommendation. Like, nothing is set in stone. So, mm-hmm. uh, hopefully, the wrestling community can rally together and, you know, make this, uh, change this, you know, before May and September, before the decision's final. Well, that's what I was going to say, was you're a lot closer to this than anybody else. I'm sure you have, you know, tons of connections in the sport. Is that what has changed in the last 24 hours? That this isn't permanent just yet i we heard that it was voted out and there's a chance that uh you know that it can be saved but as of right now it it will not be included as of 2020 are you telling us that that's not official yet well i think that the reason that it's not official is because it was voted out but then they have um a pool of different sports that can be one of them can be chosen of i think like it's seven or eight sports are going to basically compete against each other to see which one will be included back in. Mm -hmm. So uh, we're hoping that we can, you know, make a strong enough case for wrestling that it can be included back in. And there's even speculation that the reason wrestling was chosen is because, you know, we have enough history and we actually can beat out the other sports because they didn't want to include one of the other seven, you know, any of the other seven sports. And so wrestling, because of, like, the strong following it has and the, the loyalty from the people who participate and follow it, like, it will ensure that wrestling gets back in without adding the other ones. And I really hope it, that isn't, like, a political move that they're doing, like, putting people's futures at risk. Well, that's an interesting take, but I'll tell you what, it's believable. I guess that yeah. they could do something like that. It's just unfortunate that it, it, it became the sport that will go against those other sports in the future votes. I, I don't even believe it, it should have been, it, you know, it should have been in the running for that. Yeah, neither do I. I mean, um, I can understand how, like, some sports, you know, fluctuate in popularity. And, um, you know, it's it's difficult to watch with like there there's a lot of been there's been a lot of recent rule changes and things like that and it's it's harder to follow there's no doubt about that but um i think that some things are just very like fundamental to the core of like human experience and you know even if you took a group of people and you know they didn't you know like they were just in the wild wrestling would probably wrestling boxing and running would be something that they would compete against each other and because it's just kind of like a basic human instinct i think i'm with you on that one i want to see if you can answer this question sent in by big thurman thomas fan from clearwater florida he says um international wrestling doesn't allow reversals they stand you up greco doesn't allow takedowns or trips not shooting so the guys and gals who would be practicing skills that don't translate to MMA will now be more focused on folk style, which does translate to MMA. Also, athletes won't be using years of their life to practice international wrestling because their M- because MMA may be their only option after college. Do you agree with that? Well, if they if they take out international wrestling, I think the MMA is an option. Like as it stands right now you know, it's really fortunate for wrestlers that MMA, you know, is something that they can translate their skills over so successfully. So I think that MMA has opened the doors for people who, you know, maybe just didn't have the desire or the talent or the, you know, means to continue wrestling post-college. And, um, you know, maybe they might start to focus on that. I don't know. I, I suspect, though, that people, like, wrestling is such a, you know, totally obsessive kind of sport that I think people will still strive and still keep trying to get us back in the Olympics. So 
they can, you know, continue their dreams. Because most people don't go into MMA until they really feel that their wrestling career is concluded. Mm-hmm. And I, I have a sneaking suspicion that people do that with, you know, boxing or, you know, like any of the other combative sports or, you know, they, they wait until they have their natural career has run its course and then they make the switch over to MMA. And some people that's earlier, like some people don't want it after high school, they don't want to do it and they want to go in MMA and some people it's a little bit later. So, you know, I think that, uh, MMA definitely has, will help wrestlers with a career afterwards, but I don't think it'll, it'll pull people away that would have otherwise dreamed of Olympic gold. If you were a high school senior now, and you knew that in seven years, what could be the Olympic run for you, if you knew that the uh, the sport wasn't going to be available. So if you're you know if you're in somebody's shoes like that, what would be going through your mind right now? How big would the disappointment be? And do you think that would begin the process of maybe switching over to another sport or just not continuing with collegiate wrestling? Well, I think that I'm kind of a different case because. When I was in high school, we weren't in the Olympics, and I didn't, you know, we barely even heard whispers about trying to get into 96 and 2000 Olympics, so really, like, for me, it wouldn't have changed anything because I do, I did wrestling because I love to do wrestling, Mm -hmm. and, you know, I would have been, and I've said it before in earlier interviews when they were contemplating putting us in the Olympics, I'm like, if I'm, if I'm a world champion, I will be happy being a world champion, so I just want to be the best. That's really what, what drives me. But now after having had the Olympic experience and being there and having it taken away like that, it does change things. And it probably would, it might change my goals. It might make me think, oh, maybe I should do something different since I can't reach the pinnacle of my sport, you know? Right. I hope it doesn't do that, but, you know, it might. The World Championships would then become the pinnacle of the sport. What's the difference between the World Championships and the Olympics, in your opinion? Well, I think that um, the Olympics, it has a lot more uh, media coverage, and a lot more hype around it, and it's on a much larger stage. But I think that's something, it's really something special, too, because because of the fact that it happens every four years, mm-hmm. I think it's more prestigious or coveted to be able to do it when it needs to be done. It's with the most amount of pressure that can possibly be put on an athlete. So I think that makes a difference in, you know, how people view it. But to be honest, my world championships were actually harder than my Olympics because in the sense that they have, like, 25 to 30 competitors where in, this, in my, uh, when I did the Olympics, there was only 12 people that were allowed in because it's limited in how many competitors can compete and you have to right. qualify for it so um i wrestled more matches you know like and it was a lot you know more matches in a day equals it's a harder process you mm-hmm. know like if i wrestle three matches to get you know into the finals rather than wrestling six matches you know it's it wears on you differently and i think everybody who wrestles in the world championships they're wrestling equally as hard and they're putting as much as their dedication desire and intensity to win that world medal as much as an Olympic medal. So in some ways, it's harder. In some ways, the Olympics are harder because of the pressure and the media coverage. You're now into about your third year, if we include the amateur fights, in your pursuit towards the pinnacle of the sport of mixed martial arts. Compare that to your pursuit of meddling in the Olympics. Is is it about the same uh, hunger, thirst, desire to to be the best, or, or can anything duplicate you know, uh, you being an Olympic medalist in wrestling? Well, um, I think that wrestling will always be, like, my first love. And I think that, you know, nothing can really replace your first love. But um, in that sense, too, though, I really I really enjoy MMA. I like pretty much every part about it. I mean, probably minus the media, no offense. <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> I'm not used to it. I'm I'm a wrestler who wrestled in, like, little high school gyms, and nobody paid attention to me. So that's kind of how I came up. And this is definitely like a – I'm swimming in new waters. But um, as far as the training and uh, the people I'm surrounded with and stuff, like, I have the same desire to be the best. I have the same attitude towards pushing my talents and my abilities to their absolute maximum. And I think that that's, that journey for me is – just as satisfying as, you know, 
finding my limits in wrestling and finding how far I can go and learning new skills. And I'm just very drawn to combative sports and every one of them. I'm not, you know, someone who's like, wrestling's great and everything else sucks. I'm the exact opposite of that. I'm like, wow, did you see that in Taekwondo? Oh, my God, that was just so fast. And, you know, I can appreciate it from every combative sport. You know, I watch boxing, and I'm just like, those guys are unbelievable. And I watch, you know, K-1, I watch... Uh, jiu-jitsu and judo and I love them all so I think it's MMA is an awesome sport in that respect Sarah McMahon joins us here on MMA Junkie Radio uh, Sarah can you just expand a little bit about the, the that media comment is is <laughs> did, well, you, you weren't covered uh, very much as a wrestler is that what it is or, or is MMA media more of a pain in the ass than wrestling media well um, I think that like whenever I was when I'm used to doing stuff with uh, wrestling, mm-hmm. it is almost always towards, like, building a person up and representing them well. And, like, it's kind of a different spirit. You know, it's almost like the Olympic spirit. Like, when I was interviewed, it's to represent my country the best and to, you know, put your best foot forward and inspire young kids. And sometimes I think that with the MMA media, I, like, I feel a little bit more on guard. Like, they're, like they're going to take something, and this isn't every person, but... They're going to take something I say that's, you know, more innocent, more trivial in one part of the conversation and twist it into some big drama fest. You know, I know that it needs ratings and all that stuff, but it just makes me a little more leery and less excited about some interviews. I got you. No, and that makes perfect sense. I've heard that before. So um, thank you for clarifying that. Goes, what do you got for Sarah? Sarah, yesterday on the conference call, we heard Ronda Rousey talk about her getting into mixed martial arts and how, you know, she had told her mother, I'm going to give it one year, and if it doesn't work out, you know, I'm going to go do something else. And looking over your career, you know, as, as short as it's been, you've had so much success. Did you ever think that, that it would come along this fast? Well, actually, that's um, that's something that Rod and I were very similar at because I'd seen some wrestlers go into fighting and not do very well and just not take to it. And I'd seen other wrestlers go in and just flourish and so I was like you know I really don't know how how it's going to pan out and if I'm going to like it and it you know so I was like I kind of did the same thing with amateur I was like I'm just going to see how it goes and you know see if I like it see if I take to it see if the skills I've had in wrestling translate into MMA you know kind of take it from there and uh you know it's it's turned out pretty well so far I think that I, I probably sealed the deal once I did my first uh Mid session, and I realized how much I like striking. <laughs> so I was like, "Okay, I'm hooked." <laughs> wait, wait, wait! Mid session or yeah. actually hitting someone in the gym? <laughs> no, I. Um, uh, this is going to sound so stupid that I'm a fighter, but when I really hit like a nice, solid, clean punch on my partners, I think I'm so ingrained as a wrestler not to hurt other people mm-hmm. that I apologize. Like you literally know how many clean punches I get through in a practice by how often I apologize. They're like, shut up. You're supposed to hit me. And I'm like, okay, I'm sorry that I keep apologizing. <laughs> okay. So it was when you hit somebody as opposed to just hitting mitts then that's when you knew. Oh, when I hit mitts, I can hit as absolutely hard as I want. You know, like I really feel like on the bag and on the mitts, I can take out like, I can hit as powerful as I want to. Mm-hmm. And then when I'm when I'm in a fight, you know, like or if I'm hitting like my the coaches will have it where they, you know, pad up and they have the chest protectors and stuff and you can really just unload on that, then it's it's an unbelievable feeling just hitting things as hard as you can. Like I was like, Do you know how many times in wrestling I took somebody down and wanted to punch him in the face? This is like a dream come true to me. <laughs> but uh when it's in the gym and it's your teammates and you could potentially hurt them and keep them from competing, I, I it's a different feeling. I'm just like, oh, I don't want to. I don't want to be that jerk in the room that's hitting everybody harder and they're, you know, they're light sparring and they're, you know, protecting me and I go and like knee them in the head. So, Sarah, you got to help me out here. My riders are gonna hit me hard and not apologize <laughs> if I don't ask you some MMA questions. But we got to take a commercial. Can you hang in there with us for just a few minutes and uh, then we can touch on that. No problem. All right. Thank you very much. Again, Sarah McMahon is our guest on MMA Junkie Radio. She's a UFC bantamweight fighter. And we want to ask her about her upcoming matchup versus Alexis Davis. So give us a few minutes, folks. We'll be right back. MMA Junkie Radio, live from the race and sportsbook here at the Mandalay Bay Resort and Casino in fabulous Las Vegas, where elegance and excitement meet on the Las Vegas Strip. 
877-632-7000 for room reservations or follow them on Twitter, twitter.com forward slash Mandalay Bay or on Facebook, facebook.com forward slash Mandalay Bay. Also, I'll be tweeting a code later on for all you junkies. 25% off Mandalay Bay and the hotel with the link I will provide you. So follow me at MMA Junkie George and you can follow Goes at the Goes. Our next, or excuse me, our guest, Sarah McMahon, is on hold. What a trooper. Thank you, Sarah, for hanging on. At Sarah underscore McMahon is her Twitter handle. And here's a couple notes on her before we bring her back. In breaking down the UFC's women's bantamweight division, the three fighters with Team USA experience, Ronda Rousey, Olympic Judo, Sarah McMahon, Olympic Wrestling, and Kat Zingano, National Team Wrestling, have a combined record of 19-0 and compared to the combined 34-10 and for the other three, Alexis Davis, Misha Tate, and Liz Carmouche. Did you know four of the six... UFC women's bantamweight fighters started their careers 6-0. and McMahon, Rousey, Zingano, and Carmouche. The other two fighters started off 6-1. It's pretty good stats, huh? Yeah, pretty it is. Cool. All right, let's bring Sarah back. Sarah, are you there? I'm here. All right, thank you for hanging in there with us. Uh, it was really interesting to talk wrestling, and then I noticed we were running out of time, and we definitely wanted to touch on your MMA career. So you've officially signed your UFC bantamweight, correct? Now, the only thing we don't know is the fight booking, or has anything happened here in the last 24 hours? No, uh, it hasn't. I've actually had like, a lot of people ask me if I'm fighting somebody else, if I'm going to fight Alexis, and um, truthfully, like, I, I have no idea. Um, people like said, oh, because both of us were released, you know, they said that we signed at the same time, that we were possibly fighting each other, but I'm kind of leaning towards the opposite, because when they announced Misha and Kat, they announced them versus each other, and then they announced Alexis and I signing, but they didn't give us opponents. So I think maybe they might put us against other people. But, you know, it, it's possible that they're going to match us up too. But I really i am um, way in the dark when it comes to things like that. I tell my manager, I'm like, let me know whenever you know something for sure. And he doesn't know something for sure because he would immediately tell me. Right. The winner of Tate and Zingano gets the next shot. Have you heard that? No, I haven't heard that. Believe I that's what I heard, and, I, and now I wanted to make sure that that's accurate. But uh, what do you think of that? Are you okay with if, if it takes one fight, you know, and then you all of a sudden become in the running? Because uh, a lot of people felt like maybe you might be the the next person to challenge the winner of Rousey and Carmouche. See, and it's kind of strange too because I don't like. I know that people say, "Oh, Sarah needs to fight Ronda," but when it comes to like the matchups and what I'm getting told, I don't get that impression. Like, whenever someone I was asked before, you know, oh, when they're adding you to the UFC, you know, are you going to be Ronda's first fight? And I was like, I truthfully, like, with talking with my manager, I didn't even think I was in contention because I'm still lower on the rankings and I'd never fought in strike force. Like, I didn't even have any of the, you know, fights on the bigger stages. So I thought, you know, that doesn't, it doesn't seem to be how the UFC works, but, you know, like I, I appreciate the, the nod, you know, to say, yeah, I think that you are, you know, title contention, so or you could be the next, you know, title holder. I, I definitely appreciate that, but it was a, kind of like unexpected how fast everything happened. Like, one month, no, women will absolutely not be in the UFC, and the next month, hey, they're in the UFC, you know, and I'm like, Holy moly, and strike force is folding. Like, everything seemed to happen pretty quickly. I just signed my contract in September and never even got to fight for strike force. Were you getting scared until you heard these fight bookings and, and this contract, you know, that you signed that it was going to be, let's see how it goes with Rousey and Carmouche, and if it doesn't go good, we may just pull the plug? Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not as worried about that. I, I was talking yesterday, too, that I think Ronda's probably, you know, made such a strong media presence mm -hmm. that I think that even if she did lose, I think that they could still, she could still sell fights and she could still be, you know, like popular in the MMA. So I don't think our division, you know, has as much to worry about, you know. And I think that there are a lot of other strong fighters out there. If the UFC decided to push other people, I think that, you know, they get a very positive response goes what do you have for sarah sarah you mentioned that you were a little bit surprised you know when people bring up your name and ronda's because you haven't had as many fights and all that but you know that being said if the ufc were to bring up your two names are you are you ready to go would you want to face her or do you still need a, a little bit more time before you get to that 
Well, I, I'm i kind of of the, the sport that you basically show up at, to wrestling tournaments and, you know, whoever. I mean, I've had, like, the number one person first round of world championships several years. So, really, it doesn't matter to me what the order is. But um, I know that for the business of making money, it, the order does matter, you know, and how you build yourself up and how you present yourself. And that's what I pretty much leave to Monty because I'm not really good at that. I just fight. <laughs> so I tell Monty that I will train myself to become the absolute best that I possibly can. And whoever ends up being my next opponent, I will train to beat them. And you take care of, you know, us making the best money that we are worth you know like I don't care as much about money but I also don't want to fight for less than I'm worth so uh, he definitely makes sure I'm taking care of that so if the best decision is to fight her next then we'll do it financially if the best decision is to fight her one down the road or two then then that's what we'll do but that I put that in his hands specifically because I'm not I'm not good at that the manager part of the business and I don't want to be, so. Sarah, I want to clear something up before goes his next question. I'm not sure that the winner of Tate and Zingano gets Rousey. I thought I heard that, and now I'm looking through all of our pages, and I don't see that. Uh, so I, 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 I want I to take that back for now. I surprised, you know, because um, I think that a um, rematch between Misha and Ronda is something that the fans would like to see, too, and I know that Misha has expressed that she wants that, too, so I wouldn't be surprised, but... I don't know, like, a lot of stuff goes on behind the scenes and how they decide who to push and who to, you know, what fights that they want to match up now and what fights they want to match up later. So I try not to get, like, drawn into that because it can wear on your emotions of, like, oh, am I going to do this? And, oh, no, that fell through. And, oh, I'm going to fight this person. And I just had a little bit too much of that earlier on in my career that I'm like, until the contract is ready to be signed, don't even include me. Let me train and become good. Gotcha. Will All you right. be in Anaheim? Yes, I am flying out there. Nice. Well, what do you think that's going to be like sitting there watching that fight? I think it's going to be exciting. I'm, I'm very excited for it. Like That whole card is really, really cool. So I think it's going to be awesome. And, I mean, it's cool to be there for history, you know, like whatever – you know, feelings that anybody has towards Ronda and Liz, like, they both are making history. It's the first UFC fight for women's, and that's an awesome thing. So, I I mean, I think it brings a natural excitement to it, just being, you know, the first person to do it. So, that's really cool. The sport is so young, and I often tell George, you know, sometimes when we're at the fights, I think sometimes we overlook just how young the sport is, and, and we were at the Cain Velasquez Jr. DeSantos fight, and, and afterwards... I looked around, I looked at all the people, and I couldn't help but think, were we just like at Ali Frazier right now for MMA, you know, later down the road? Are people going to be talking about this? And you're right, that is a big deal for you to be there for that fight. I think that will be something that people will be talking about for years to come. Yeah, I, I'm, I think it's great. Uh, how's your arm bar defense? Is that, <laughs> is, you know, Liz seems like she's working on this 24-7, and she doesn't believe she can get arm barred. How, how would you grade your uh, jiu-jitsu game? I don't know. Um, I think that wrestlers naturally are hard to submit. You know, that's where people probably say, oh, wrestlers are boring to watch because we have a very good amount of control of people's body. So it's not as exciting because we're not doing rolling around and flashing. We're shutting things down. So I don't know because I still, I, I do get arm barred. I do get triangled. I mean, I practice against guys who are have been doing it longer than me, who are stronger than me and faster than me. So I get submitted in practice. I, I don't really know how I gauge against other girls, but when I've gone and competed against other girls, like the majority of them I beat, even if they're black belts. So, I mean, I, I, I don't know exactly where to grade myself, but I'm hard to submit. So I think that that alone will make it a really exciting fight. You know how you said earlier that when you hit someone, you apologize? Were you the same <laughs> way even before you had uh, be- before you had kids? Yes, I was. Okay, um, so that didn't I, make you soft or anything like that? you know? No, no. Right. Actually, that probably makes me a little bit meaner. I mean, to be honest, like my mama bear instinct ha- is like ten times worse than any other kind of anger that I ever could have had in life. 
if I have a hard time getting up for a fight, I just imagine my opponent doing something that would hurt my child, mm -hmm. and I could rip her damn head off. Like, I wouldn't even blink an eye. Like, it's horrible. Like, I would always say that, you know, like, I could never hurt another human being, especially having my brother murdered, and, you know, like, that life is so, you know, there's a sanctity in life built in me, but then you put my daughter into the equation, and it is game over. I don't care who you are. I will put, I will send you flowers. Like, so um, I'm actually probably meaner because of that. Gotcha. But in practice, I think that um, it was, I think that wrestling is so hard on your body, and you're always, when you're in practice, you're always facing injury. I mean, even when you first start, it's just so hard on your body. So you're always trying to get as good as you can without getting injured to where you can't compete. And um, as a wrestler, I always try to work around my, my teammates' injuries and not make things worse for them. So that's like a, it's a natural instinct in me to not, or, you know, to not keep somebody out of competition because of a practice injury. So that's kind of where that stems from. Last question. Have you been watching primetime, and what do you think about it? I have not. Um, I'm actually, I, I don't really watch that much stuff. I don't really get that much time to. I'm, there's tons of people I would love to follow more, and, you know, some of the things I think that are going on are great, but I barely get to watch the fighters, the actual fights of the fighters I like to follow. Most of the time I'm with my daughter, and you just can't sit around on the Internet all day long when you have a 3-year-old. So I don't get to watch very much stuff, but um, I wholeheartedly support it, and I think that it's great that they're, they're showing the women and, you know, in the way that the women meet should be represented and that they're going all out and rolling out the red carpet for them. So I support that. Uh, one last thing about wrestling. For those that do want to support the wrestling cause, uh, do you have any links you'd like to share where people can either communicate with the IOC or, or just back wrestling in, in any way? Well, um, they have on Facebook, they have... Um, uh, Save Olympic Wrestling. They have like a, a few different pages you can go and like. And then the mat.com will probably have a lot of different avenues that people can, you know, s show support in any way they can. Um, there's different, we're petitioning the White House, and, you know, um, you find that on Twitter, and there, people have been hashtagging Save Olympic Wrestling too. So um, there's a lot of good things that you can, can do there. But I, I think that probably USA Wrestling it's on the mat.com will end up taking charge and funneling all the, you know, the community together towards, you know, a couple very, uh, you know, uh, strong stances. And so we can all bind together instead of re like being so spread out in, you know, 40 different people's pages and causes. Sarah, thank you very much for the interview. We really appreciate it. And again, congratulations for being part of the ultimate fighting championship. Can't wait to see your run in 2013. Thank you. Sarah can be followed on Twitter at Sarah underscore McMahon. Thank you again, Sarah. Yeah, thank you. All right, bye-bye. All right, folks, that was Sarah McMahon, one of the top 135 pounders out there that you may not have heard of. She's kind of flown under the radar, but she definitely has the credentials, uh, a wrestling Olympian, silver medalist, and 6-0 and oh is where she stands as a mixed martial artist. She's actually looked really, really good, too. Not, She's not a wrestler who doesn't have any hands. She's got hands. Trust me. Let's sneak in this quick call here before we get...